quick recap of category four. Category four is what we just finished up in class. Domain and range of quadratics, graphing quadratic functions, key features, transformations, solve quadratics by factoring, vertex form and standard form, real solutions and quadratic regressions. So let's take a look at domain and range. When you have a quadratic, typically you've kind of got like a little physics problem going on. I'm standing on a ledge here and I throw a ball out of the building and I want to know mm, how long was it in the air. So let's say I was on a bridge, it's 50 feet high, and when I throw it off it took three seconds for it to hit the ground. And I ask you what is the domain of this situation? Well, domain is the x-axis. Where does this start? Well, the domain is going to be every single point on this graph, right? Every single one. Starting here at zero on the x-axis, every single point all the way to here, if I were to graph it. So I would say that I start at zero and I go all the way out to three. X is in the middle. It's less than or equal to, less than or equal to. Every single value I go over and look up, I'm going to see my graph. How tall is it? So it starts still here at zero. How tall is it? Well, it looks like it goes to 50, but actually it goes all the way up here. So let's say the vertex is at, we'll say, 1.5 comma 62. So that means I go over one and a half and I go up to 62. So it starts at zero and it goes all the way up to 62 high. Less than or equal to, less than or equal to. It goes from 0 all the way up here to 62. Okay, what is the vertex of this quadratic? Well, the vertex is the highest, on this one, it's the highest point. It would be 1.5 comma 62. What is the axis of symmetry? Axis of symmetry has an x in it. x means x equals. What is the x value of my vertex? It's 1.5. So there's my axis of symmetry. Is it a maximum or a minimum vertex? It would be a maximum because it's the highest point. A minimum vertex would be when it goes this way and the vertex is down here. This would be a minimum vertex. All right, so we've done domain and range, maximum, min, um, Let's see what else is there. Uh, I think that's all I'm coming up with right now. Oh, how long was the ball in the air? What are the zeros or the solutions? What's the solution? It was in the air for three seconds. Okay. The solutions or the zeros are the x-intercepts. All right, and that kind of recaps a lot of information about quadratics. We also had situations where you had, like, we'll say um, something like this. I'll just do that right there. This is the parent function, f of x equals x squared, or y equals x squared. And I would say, what if I take g of x, and it works just like linear, back from category 2, I think it was, or category 1. If I say negative 2, f of x minus 3, plus 2. In Desmos, I could put that in and I could see everything. Here's what the graph, if you were to try and graph this on Desmos, negative would reflect it. So now it's going to be going down. Negative, or the 2 is going to make it more narrow. X minus 3 is going to move it negative 3. No, X is lie. So it's going to move over 1, 2, 3. The 2 is going to move it up 2. So it's right here, it's going to go down, and it's going to be a little bit more narrow. So my graph would look something like that. So reflect, more narrow, to the right three, the opposite of what's written, and the end moves it up and down. Transformations. You can do those on Desmos. They're really nice how those work out. Um, let's see, what was the other thing? I should have written it down and I did it. Uh, factoring. So if I have 2x squared, no, let's just make it a simple one. Let's do x squared plus 6x um, plus, we'll say, minus 7. So if we were going to factor it, factor it is when you do two sets of parentheses. 
it's always x times x. I find the easiest way to do it is just to graph it and look and see. This would have x-intercepts at uh, positive 1 and negative 7. They would look something like this. So when I plug this in, I would put a plus 7. That's a positive 1. I would plug in a negative 1. x times x is x squared, so I'm good to go, and it is factored. You also have ones that are perfect squares. If I have x squared minus 49, I could graph it. And when I do, I would see positive 7 and negative 7, and my graph would look like this. So I know that when I factor, it would be x and x, positive 7, negative 7, right? Take the opposite of it. But the other thing to note on this one is these are perfect squares, x squared and 7 times 7. When you have the difference of perfect squares, difference meaning subtraction, then it's just whatever those squares are, one positive, one negative. You'll get it either way, whichever way you can do it. Doesn't matter to me which way you do it. All right, um, let's see. We also have, there were so many things on here. Hold on, let me go look again. I should have taken a picture of it, I didn't. I didn't put it on there, but I should have. You also have to sw solve with quadratic um, formula. So, O, B squared minus 4 A, C over 2 A. Remember, if you can't factor something, like you look at the zeros and they're like 0 0.0936 or some kind of crazy numbers, that means we're going to use quadratic formula to solve it. So let's take this x squared plus 7x plus 1. My a value is whatever is in front of the x squared. So that's 1. b would be 7 and c would be 1. I would plug these values into here in order to solve it. I probably should change that to a negative 1 to make that one work out. Okay, so here we go. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I always put it with parentheses around every single variable. And that way when I plug in my values, it works out. So b is first and it's going to be 7 and 7. A is 1, and that's going to be up top and bottom, and C is going to be up here at the top. So I would put this into my calculator, and it is going to give me two different values. If you want to pause your video and put it in, I'm going to pause mine, and in about a second you're going to have the answers. All right, there's my first one. When I plugged it in, I'm going to zoom in on my calculator so you can make sure. Remember, you do negative B plus the square root of, be sure you put b in parentheses and then square it, minus 4 times 1 times negative 1. I can go up here. I know it's hard to see, but I'm going to copy and paste it down. I'm going to scroll back over, and I'm going to put the negative in there. Hit Enter, and there's the other one. I always go out six decimals. It's all good there. Okay, so I want to show you some of the stuff you're going to see when you do these. You're going to see things on your test when you're trying to solve it using the quadratic, you might see 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 as choice A. Choice B might be 2, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3, and so on. And you're like, wait, I only know how to get decimal points, and that's fine. What you can do is, let me clear this out, 2 plus second square root of 3. Because you know that if you have plus or minus, that means you have two answers. When I do the math here and just get the decimals, this is 3.73205. And then I could go back, hit enter. I could change that to subtraction. And the other answer is 0.267949. So if that was what I got whenever I used quadratic formula, I could figure out which way to go. So you know how to convert this into decimals so that you can find your answer. All right. Um, let's see, I think that was everything I needed to do. You also have regressions. Remember when you do quadratic regressions, you're going to do stat, edit, and then we're going to calculate, and quadratics are number five. So how do you know if you're doing a quadratic? If you are plotting the path of a ball, what goes up must come down. That would be a quadratic. 
if you're throwing something off a bridge, what goes up must come down. Just think about it. In real life, you're going to probably see a lot of quadratics. So if you're talking about throwing something, kicking something, tossing something, shooting something, what goes up must come down. Okay, And that will be a quadratic regression. Good luck on the test.